How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool sci-fi tunnel loop. We're going to have some nodes, we're going to have some modeling, we're going to do some camera shake. So let's get straight into making that. All right, so we are in a blank document here. What we're going to do, shift A, let's go ahead and get a cylinder. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit RX90 and then SY8. So that's the size we're going to keep it at. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab. We're going to go here to the edge select, I mean, sorry, the uh, loop cut click here and I'm going to give it 80 cuts. So that will give you nice square faces here in your loop cutting. So that's really nice. Let's go ahead and remain in edit mode. We're going to click the face select. I'm going to click this guy. I'm going to hit X and uh, delete the face. And I'm going to hit this guy, hit X and click faces. Now we're going to have this empty area. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift D and duplicate this. So we have a duplicate. And then we'll go here to the this cylinder tab, hit A to make sure everything is selected, right click, subdivide. And we're gonna bring this smoothness up to one and that's all we wanna do for that. And we can right click and shade smooth. So let's go ahead and do a little. Now what I'm gonna do is hit shift A, go to curve, go to circle. I'm hitting R, X, 90. So now we have this guy. Let's go here to the curve settings and bring this resolution and render preview all the way to 64. Here in the geometry, I'm gonna bring my depth pretty far up, scale this in. Now we have that nice little tube here and we can adjust that later. So what I'm gonna do here is hit Alt D. So now we're making a instance of this object. Now I'm gonna hit Control. And so it does grid snapping, Alt D. Go right here to the middle and then Alt D go here to the middle and that should that should be enough for our tunnel here. Now let's go ahead and get this cylinder right here. And we have this new cylinder, nice topology here. What I'm going to do is here in the transform settings on the scale, I'm going to scale it in. So something like scale it in right around there. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Copy this right here, control C. And then right here on the Y, control V. So now it's scaled in a little bit because we're gonna do a little bit of decimation magic. So what we're going to do is do some modifier magic to take away some of this geometry to make it look like it's sort of degrading or falling apart. And then we're gonna add a wireframe modifier to it and we're gonna get this really cool surface. So first thing we need to do is hit edit. I mean, go to edit mode, hit A to make sure all the faces are selected. I'm gonna go here to the object data properties click plus on the vertex group and making sure everything is selected, click assign. Now we've made a vertex group and that's super important because we're gonna use that in the modifiers that we're going to do next. So this is just a weird convoluted mess of buttons we're clicking, but just try to remember it and you're gonna get a really cool um, thing. But essentially we're gonna make a mask and cut holes into this. So add modifier, vertex weight edit. We're going to go ahead and select that vertex group Click group add, group remove, on fall off, go to custom curve, and then we'll bring this down, and then we'll bring this up, just like that. And then here on influence, we're gonna click new. Now we're gonna make a texture, so go to your textures, and then click on image of movie, go to clouds. We're gonna bring that depth down, click on colors, bring that contrast way up. Now we have that. So now we've created this whole texture in the vertex weight edit. And what that's going to do now is when we add in a mask modifier. So go to the mask, click on the vertex group. Now we've activated the, um, the mask. So to explain what happened in case this sort of flew over your head, we made a texture here, told the vertex group to be speaking through it with this texture. So now you're seeing this whole thing basically made a texture. And then in here, we used a mask to cut holes. And so what's really cool about that is if we go and play with the texture, it will add or remove different um, faces. So now we can go and exploit that really quickly with a um, wireframe. So let's go ahead and get our wireframe here. And then I need to control A, apply scale. So now we have all these little things here. I'm gonna add a bevel modifier to kind of mess with a little bit of the modeling. And I'm gonna click on boundary. 
so that everything looks nice. And so now we have our interior. I do want to play with that texture just a little bit. I don't like the small amount of faces being shown here. So it's really up to your preference what you like. I like this a lot right here. This is pretty nice. So now we can go ahead and start looking and animating and shading. So now what we're going to do is start shading this. So let's go right here into shading. And then I'm going to click on our uh, little circle here. What's really cool about these circles, since we did Alt D and created instances, when we add the material, the metallic material adds it to all of them. We're going to make it pretty dark here because we're going to get pretty crazy with the lighting. I accidentally used the subsurface. Go to the base color and bring that color pretty far down. Let's make a quick roughness. So COL, color ramp here. Plug the color ramp into the roughness so that we can manipulate it with everything else behind it. We're going to get a noise texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default. You'll hit Control T. I'm going to hit G to move it up. Go to the object coordinate and use the factor. So now let's kind of zoom in on one of these tubes and just try to look at our texture here. So I'm going to bring my detail to 12, bring my roughness up pretty far, bring this black portion of the uh, color ramp in. So now we get a little bit of shininess, but we're going to cut that out, bring the color ramp up. So now we get not quite so shiny bring this in so we get more contrast and now we have a really nice metallic material. What I'm going to do now is hit A, Control L, click materials and that apply that material to everything. You can see how the noise texture is really stretched out and that's because we forgot to apply scale on this big tube. So I'm going to click on the tube, Control A, and now we have nice even looking material here. So now we've done the shading. I do need to, however, get, I do need to go back here to layout, shift A, click on uh, mesh, circle. I'm going to go from fill type to ingon, RX90. What this thing is going to do is be that light at the end of the tunnel. So that's all that's going to serve. And we do need to add the light. So we'll go here, click on um, the material preview, go down here to the little Go down here to materials, click new, principled, go to emission, and make it not so bright. Something like this. And now we have our sci-fi tube. Let's go ahead and get our camera, shift A, camera, control, alt, zero, snap it to view. So now this is our camera view. In the camera settings, we're going to go and bring our focal length pretty far back, something like this. So now if you click on the camera and hit R twice, you can kind of play with how this is going to be looking. Looks pretty cool already. Now we can continue working on the shading. So let's click, click on this big tube on the outside. Hit zero to go back to the camera view and go to the shading actually. Hitting zero. So we need to add some more things to this tube to get those really cool light streaks. So that's what we're going to design now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Highlight these, hit G to go up, and we're going to be utilizing this emission strength here on the tube. So now everything washes out. So what we're going to do is Shift A, search, get a color ramp here, plug that into the emission of our principled here. Now let's get a Voronoi, V-O-R, Voronoi texture. I'm going to get Control T and get a new setup here because we're going to manipulate it. Use the object coordinate and plug and plug color into factor. We're going to go here to Chevy Chev for our shape. So now if you bring this color ramp in, now we have these shapes doing some fun stuff. So I'm going to go from linear to constant. So we get a hard edge here on our uh, color ramp, brings it in like that. How do we make those streaks? Well, it's done here in the mapping. So if we take the Z here, let's see which one is it. So if we take the Z here and we just stretch it out and go closer to zero, now we're starting to stretch out our pieces here. So let's go ahead and in your EV settings, if you haven't already done that, turn on ambient occlusion, turn on bloom, screen space reflection, super important, and motion blur. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to go from 3D to 4D so we can kind of play with the random seed here, scale, put it at 25, and we can go ahead and go back here to stretching out. So for me, it looks like 0 0.007. 
on the um, the Z scale here works and then we'll be animating it and then we'll be animating it here on the Y rotation and now you get this stuff of course it's not glowing because we need to go to the emission strength and make it glow and so now we can see this animation already coming through looks really really cool let's go ahead and manipulate a little bit of color so let's bring this closer to a blue here something like that and let's click on this really big emission material and also make it close to that blue so something like this we want them to match so now we have something really cool so one thing you'll notice is even on the wireframe that same material is happening i made a mistake so what i'm going to do here is if you ever make that mistake where you made you were editing material and you meant it to be a little bit different than all the other ones what you can do is click on the main material here i'm going to hit that button there to make a duplicate and then i'm going to go ahead and click on the material that the wireframe and these tubes are on and i'm just going to disconnect this right here so now they're back to not having that weirdness on them bring that emission strength to zero so now only this outer material has the emission plugged into it so made that mistake but it is a super super easy fix now we can also add some color if you go here to the color ramp hit the plus icon bring this over bring this all the way to white give you a nice fiery orange and then i can bring this in to decrease the amount of them and then again we can go ahead hit zero to go to the camera view and we can see how this is looking now let's play with the look if you if mine looks a little bit different than yours quite it might be your color management so if you click on the little camera icon go down here to color management go to filmic and very high contrast and then for me i'm going to go to my bloom settings and bring the intensity down um, it's a little bit much for me it's kind of covering everything up and then we can also we can bring that brightness down a little bit if we want and now we have something really really cool let me show you how to do some camera shake but first let's go ahead and animate this these materials so i'm going to go ahead and bring up a new timeline go here to uh go here to the timeline i'm going to give myself 500 frames the reason being it's hard to kind of animate this correctly to make it slow or fast 500 was a really good medium for me and because it's EV, it should be a pretty quick render. So let's go ahead and zero out this Y. We'll go to the very end, go back to the uh, frame zero. I'm gonna use my scroll wheel and kind of get this timeline to be the size I want it to be. So first I'm gonna go to my edit preferences and make sure that my default interpolation on my animation is set to linear, super, super important, set it to linear. Right click, insert keyframe, we'll go to the very end and then we'll do 360 gives you a perfect loop oops insert keyframe and now we have our really cool sci-fi tunnel craziness and if this is too many streaks or lines for you you can always just bring this in and then bring this in and now you have fewer streaks and lines a good contrast um, always looks really nice for this so this looks like a really nice medium um, so let's bring this white in now this looks pretty cool again all right so i mentioned camera shake how do you do some camera shake let's figure how to do that out i'm going to teach you a really cool trick to use modifiers with animation so let's go to our camera and figure out kind of what axes do we want the camera shake to be and for me that's kind of on all rotate all three rotation axes so let's start on the x-axis so this is the first camera shake uh, movement i want so I'm going to right click, insert single keyframe, go to the very end, right click, insert single keyframe, and then right here in the middle, I'm going to say I want it to go down right about that much for my camera shake, and then we'll insert that keyframe. So now we have over 500 frames at doing that. You might say, oh, well, that's extremely slow. Well, don't worry. When we go to the modifier section, we're going to really expound on all this craziness. So now what I'm going to do is take that same idea for the right, right here. So insert keyframe, go to the very end, insert keyframe right here in the middle. We're going to bring it something like this, insert that keyframe. So now we have kind of that, and then we'll do the same thing for this last axis, so left and right. So click, 
keyframe, keyframe, and then right here in the middle, we'll just kind of move it somewhere over here, keyframe. So now it's doing that, but don't worry. Now we're gonna add some randomness to these animations. So let's click on the animation tab, zero key, and we'll just stay, we don't even need to see it rendered out. Right here, I'm gonna hit the down arrow and go to the graph editor. And this is where you can manipulate and play with your keyframes. So I'm gonna click on the camera here and right over here you can see this drop down. These are the um, changes we've made, the animations we've made right here, you can view them. So we're gonna go on X, Euler, and rotation, whatever, however you wanna pronounce that. And we're gonna scroll this up so we can see those keyframes that we created, which looks like they are right here. So you can see your three keyframes right here. I'm gonna highlight them so that you can actually see them. Uh, so I'm gonna hold down shift and click all three. So let's go here and click on modifiers. You're gonna see this little window right here. Click on modifiers, add modifier and click noise. So now, uh oh, it's doing all this craziness. So you can start to play with that speed. So you right here you have scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that scale up so now you have a more of a smooth motion in the noisiness. So we applied a noise to that mo motion and really went crazy with it. Now in strength, that's when you can actually play with the amount of shake. So right here, looks like a pretty fair amount of shake. And then we can bring that scale up some more, make it qu not quite so movie because we do have three other axes to play with. So let's do the same thing on why you literally, uh, Y Eulier animation. I'm saying it wrong, but you know what I mean. So the Y rotation here. I'm gonna click all of these. Modifier, add noise. Now it's doing that craziness again. Bring that scale up. And then bring that strength down. And we can bring that scale up some more. So now we're having this craziness. So it's very organic looking, very slow, very organic, and that's what we want. Maybe bring up that strength somewhere I wanna see. Okay, so it's the right and left. Okay, cool. Now for the last Z, so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of our pieces here, add modifier, noise, bring that scale pretty far up, bring that strength down and now look at this, we have a very nice looking kind of handheld camera look that when we go back to the layout, look at the animation, you have this very organic feel to your animation. It's very subtle. It kind of springs in with that motion. So it looks very organic, looks like something's happening and you can expound on it, make it crazier, make it more subtle. Um, but now you added a level, a really nice level of detail to your animation. Last thing we're going to do is add in some motion, not motion blur, some depth of field. So we're gonna click on our camera, go down here to uh, depth of field, click on the green camera, depth of field, apply it. I'm gonna bring my f-stop way down so I can see exactly where it's focusing. So it looks like right over there. I'll bring my f-stop up a little cause it's a little heavy. And I want it to be focused. Ooh, that's a bit much. So let's see, focus distance, focus right about there maybe closer to the middle. And then we can bring that f-stop back up. And so we can just kind of have motion blur right there. And now when we press play, look at this, we've made a really cool, a really crazy looking sci-fi tube animation. You can do anything with tons of fun stuff here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. Oh, I did forget I was in the middle of my outro. I forgot to show you how to render it. So we'll click on the little printer icon. If you wanna do a PNG sequence, just select where you wanna save it, put it in a folder. You can just deal with your PNG sequence. If you just want Blender to compile a video for you, you don't have to do any other stuff. You'll go from PNG to FFmpeg video, encoding, of course, save it where you wanna save it. Go from this to MP4, uh, medium quality to perceptually lossless and you're ready to go render, render render animation. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video.